Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about the mixed strategy algorithm. I go over this in lesson 1.5 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. Now remember in the last video we covered matching pennies. We saw that there weren't any pure strategy Nash equilibria, and we guessed, actually correctly, that if both players flipped their coins, then each player would be indifferent between choosing heads or tails, and so neither player could change his or her strategy and expect to do better, which met the definition of Nash equilibrium. So flipping a coin served as a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now that was relatively easy to guess because all of those payoffs are ones and negative ones. However, most games aren't going to have that simple of a payoff structure. For example, if we looked at this game where we have different weights associated with each outcome, then it's not so obvious that coin flipping is going to work out so well. And so what we're going to be doing in this video is developing an algorithm, a mixed strategy algorithm as the title implies, that allows us to find what sort of mixed strategies uh, for each of these players makes the other guy indifferent. So for example, what we need to do is we need to find a mixed strategy for player one. So sometime he'll play up and the rest of the time he'll play down. And we need to find a strategy that looks like that, that leaves player two indifferent between selecting left and right. If player two gets the same payoff for selecting left on average as she does for selecting right, then it doesn't matter which strategy she chooses. So she can choose a mixed strategy, a randomization between left and right. And if that randomization leaves player one indifferent between, between choosing up and down, then that means he's perfectly satisfied also maintaining his original mix strategy and so that means neither player is going to have incentive to change his or her strategy so we end up in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium with those probabilities between the two strategies. So that sounded a little bit confusing it'll become clearer as we actually go about solving for the mixed strategies. So let's start off with player one's mixed strategy. Now what we're trying to do here with this mixed strategy for player one is come up with a mixed strategy that makes player two's expected utility for left, her payoff for selecting left as a pure strategy, equal to her payoff, her expected utility, for choosing right as a pure strategy. And it's pretty obvious here that player two's expected utility for left is a function, this function f, of a mixed strategy, sigma u. This sigma u represents the probability that player one plays up. So if player two plays left, then she's at the mercy of player one's decision between up and down to determine what her payoff is, whether it's negative three or one. And so that's what this is representing here. And it's the same thing if player two is selecting right, then she's at the mercy of player one's decision to choose up or down, which this is what the sigma u is representing, which is just a probability that player one plays up and a probability that player one plays down. And that's going to determine whether she gets two or zero here. Now, if you remember from basic algebra, we have three equations here with three unknowns. We have an expected utility for left, an expected utility for right, and a probability distribution, which we're representing with sigma up. And so if you have three equations and three unknowns, you can actually solve for all of them. And that's what we'll be doing here. So first, let's start off by solving for player one's mixed strategy and looking at what the expected utility for left is as a function of this mixed strategy sigma up. All right, well, some percentage of the time, player two is getting negative three. So in this case, her expected utility for left, that means player two is always selecting left here if we're trying to calculate her expected utility for left. And so some percentage of the time, player one is playing up and he's getting neg or she's getting negative three. And then the rest of the time, player one is playing down and player two is getting one. And so her expected utility for left is sigma up times negative three plus one minus sigma up times one. Let's go over this to be really explicit where all of these numbers are coming from. So sigma up represents the probability that player one plays up. And if player one plays up, then that percentage of the time, player two will get negative three. That's this payoff right here. And then we need to add that payoff to what happens the rest of the time. So one minus sigma up is the probability that player two plays down, or rather player one plays down. And so that percentage of the time where player one is playing down, player two is earning one point of utility for that outcome. And so you multiply the percentage of the time that player one plays down times that payoff of one. And so adding those two things together, you get player two's expected utility for left. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side. So what is player two's expected utility for right as a function of a mixed strategy sigma up? Well, some percentage of the time, player one is selecting up and player two is getting two. 
and the rest of the time she's getting zero. So we can write that like this. Her expected utility for right is some probability of the time, some percentage of the time player one plays up and she gets two. And then we need to add that to the probability that player one plays down, which is one minus sigma up. The rest of the time, if player one isn't going up, that means he must be going down. And that percentage of the time, player two is earning zero, so we're multiplying it by zero. And so that's what player two's expected utility is for right. Now, remember, we want to set those two expected utilities equal to each other. So we have expected utility for left and expected utility for right. We've defined the expected utilities for each of those as a function of sigma up. And now we just set those two things equal to each other, this equal to this. And if you run through a little bit of algebra here and you solve for sigma up, running through those steps here, you can pause if you're unclear about how I did each of those steps, you can work through them for yourself. You arrive at sigma up equals one sixth. So what this is saying is if player one plays up one sixth of the time and down five sixths of the time, then player two is indifferent between left and right. Regardless of her choice, she still winds up with the same expected utility. That was from this equation right here. So this mixture for player one leaves player two indifferent. Now we're going to do the opposite thing. We're going to do the same thing, basically, except we're going to switch the players around. So this time we're asking ourselves, what is player one's expected utility for up and what is player one's expected utility for down? We're going to set those two things equal to each other. Well, his expected utility for up is just a function of player two's mixed strategy now. So we're solving for player two's mixed strategy. And that's just going to be represented by this function of sigma L. And player one's expected utility for down is also a function of sigma L. We still have three unknown equations, or three equations and three unknown variables. So that means we can solve for them. So let's work through that. Let's first find player one's expected utility for up. Well, again, it's just a function of some mixed strategy sigma left. So if player one is playing up here, because we're solving for his expected utility of up, then some percentage of the time player one, or player two is going to play left and player one is going to earn three. And then the rest of the time player two is going to play right and player one is going to get negative two. So sigma left is the probability that player two plays left. Multiply that by this payoff of three here and then add that to one minus sigma left to the probability that player two plays right and multiply that by negative two here. You sum those things, two things together and you get player one's expected utility for up. Now it's expected utility for down looks like this. So some percentage of the time player one is getting negative one and the rest of the time he's getting zero. So his expected utility for down is sigma left, the probability that player two plays left times negative one plus the probability that uh, player two plays right one minus sigma left times this payoff of zero here. And we're going to set those two equations equal to each other. So the expected utility for up is equal to the expected utility for down. Those are the expected utility equations that we came up with in the last two slides. And again, if you want to pause, you can see all of the step-by-step -step mathematics here, but you eventually get to sigma left is equal to one third. And so if player two is playing left with probability one third and right with probability two thirds, then now player one is indifferent between choosing up and down. Again, this equation right here, assures that his expected utility is the same whether he plays up or down. And so the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game is for player one to play up with probability one sixth and down with probability five sixth, and for player two to play left with probability one third and right with probability two thirds. As long as the players are mixing in that manner, then neither player can change his or her strategy and expect to do better because their expected utilities for up and down for player one are the same and player two's expected utilities for left and right are the same. No one can profitably deviate and change their strategy and expect to do better based off of what every other one else is doing. And so that leads to a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And so that's how you use the, uh, the mixed strategy algorithm to solve for mixed strategy Nash equilibria. We'll actually be exploring a couple more cases of this mixed strategy algorithm. So if you need more practice, you will see more of that coming up in the next video or in the next couple of videos. And actually next time we will talk about a common mistake that you see people make when they're writing mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And I'll tell you how to avoid that in the next video. Join me then.